showed how strong the ganking potential of a hero like Dragonite is with a Shadow Blade. I think, I think Shadow Blade on DK was more of a pub thing at that time, too, mm -hmm. and then it became kind of permeated into existence, not only through SEA, but just through, just I guess, people fiddling around with it in, in American pubs, because I saw yep. it through there as well, but... Um, MVP Phoenix, they go for the Razor with their last pick. It's TI time, Mott. Yeah, I mean, uh, short of the Undying, honestly, it feels like the same sort of thing. And I guess Storm Spirit, which he was sort of popular at TI4. Uh, he had his moments. Now it, he's going to definitely be a lot more popular. Of course, DK was pretty popular. Oh, yes. Um, JR Copter, not so much. Shadow Demon, not so much. Lestrac, definitely not so much at TI4. No, no, so there's a couple of interesting picks here. And as long as we have these heroes that we didn't have at TI4, have these new heroes in the meta, I'm completely fine. And the fact that Troll and Jug and all those guys are out is is completely fantastic. Well, I, I think Jug is still legitimate. Yeah, he's pretty good still. I think uh, I think Jug is a fantastic fifth pick in a lot of situations. And uh, you know what's funny, too, also, is that Axe, for a period of time after the patch came out in, like, 6.83 and 6.84, they people started picking him. Yeah. And he was picked, and... And people were using him, and he, they did okay with him, and then they started losing with him, and they're like, oh, all right, maybe, right, maybe no, don't pick this hero. I mean, there's always that time of period where everyone wants to be a little contentious about whether or not a hero is actually not good anymore or not. I think Axe is still good. He's just more of a situational pick. Yes. And as strong as the, how important lanes are right now, you can't really afford to put him in the jungle, yeah. and he doesn't do fantastic offlane nowadays. It's like so. it's like the, the situation is like, are we going against a solo brood? If so, pick Axe, go well, across your tri lane. also and picking all of these ranged... There's so many ranged heroes being picked now. A lot of, like, you'll run, like, four ranged support-style heroes in lineups now. And so that's just the type of heroes that Axis does not do well against. He yeah. does well against melee, tanky carries. And when we had Jug and Troll getting picked a lot, that was really common. Even though Troll stayed in range form a lot, he still wanted to be in melee form for the bash. So it was good for Axis to kind of scare you away from that. So it's, it's not really his meta anymore. And like I was saying before, Razor, it seems like every year Razor... He somehow slips by, man. He, he gets slips through. In. He slips in every TI. He starts getting picked again. He gets nerfed after TI. He, he wreaks havoc, havoc on Seattle. And then he just fades away. And he just lays in wait to come back again. That's one of those heroes that I don't really mind that much. Like, it's not a Death Prophet. Like, Death Prophet, I've, I've said this numerous times. I would be okay if she just got eliminated from the game. In, as like, <laughs> She's at, your in choice. General. Yeah, I think, I think so. Because the, the idea of, like, her hitting her R button and just running at you never... That's uh, fine. I mean, it seems, it's fun if you're doing it. I don't think it's fun if the opposing team is doing it uh -huh. to you. Or if you have to see it so often that it's just because it right. just becomes the, the thing. Um, Razor is um, one of those heroes where I'm like, all right. I know what this guy can do, but they oh, always surprise me with the builds, right. I think. They're, we've seen, like, multiple different, like, the fact that people aren't going ags anymore, the fact that there's new items, it always right. leads up to new possibilities, which I think is very cool. All right, and we're going to see everybody picking up their heroes right. here. It's going to be an offline Earthshaker, it looks like, in a four position undying. As March, March can hop around a little bit, so this isn't guaranteed, but it does look like this is an offline Earthshaker. And, and I was talking about... Lashrak Shadow Demon support duo, but they will might. I think they are going aggressive trial and maybe safe flame gyrocopter. They're yeah. sending somebody it's into a solo position and they're probably going aggro in uh, the other position. Yeah, because it doesn't make a whole. Um, Shadow Demon Lashrak is more of a lane combo than it is a mid game combo. I guess you could do dual lane. I think if you wanted to, if you could do Rubik, Gyrocopter, and the safe lane if you really wanted to. It's, it's, running a tri lane against an Earthshaker is honestly pretty bad. Right. Because at the end of the day, he's going to do his blocks. His blocks are going to happen. And if you're running a tri lane against it, it's not that much worse than just running a dual lane against it because at the end of the day, he's going to get his blocks off. So I think either just, just running dual lanes against the Surfshaker or running an aggressive tri lane and letting the gyro just solo safe is not a bad idea. Although it is kind of out of character for Signature Trust, loving to make sure that Lakels gets his farm. So we'll see how they, how they wind up doing it. Right now, it does look like the aggro tri lane is going to be how they go, unless it's just making sure they get these wards down. I mean, that's not unheard of either, but I think you're right. I think this is going to be an aggro trial line coming out from Signature Trust. They have Moon Bells up here ready to go. They're going to even smoke up for this as well. They might even, they do, all, they are very strong at level one engagements. They have Shadow Demon Disrupt into Split Earth followed up by, you know, maybe a lift or a Fable. He already did go for the lift. They're going to run oh, in. KP Moon Bells, they out. find him. They get KP under Split Earth. But there's the Fisher. Beautiful coming out onto My Pro, the cast Macro as well. caught out now. Uh, the Fisher block actually hurts them, but Febby's going to walk through. He's clarifying up. He's got another Fisher in about six seconds. My Pro should go down. Nice telekinesis will stun Good, up a stun. couple. QO has the remnant, but that's all he's got. The decay, last right click, first oh, just block enough. for QO. That decay ends up netting them the kill. I think Febby probably would have gotten the last hit anyway. And it's Febby playing the Earthshaker. Yeah. 
And this is interesting. He has sentries on him. I'm not sure if... I'm pretty sure this is more of a support build. It looks like they're going to have KP. Yeah, KP's playing the Razor as a core. They're playing Q as a core for sure. Right. And then March, I'm pretty sure, is going to be, be an a core as well because he has the, the, the stout shield and he's got the mango as well, like you mentioned. Okay. So, Well, th this is not uncommon for MVP. They oftentimes will switch up roles. Like if they ever, We talked about that Warlock earlier. If that ever comes out for them, March is usually the one who plays it. So, And they are doing dual lanes, by the way, for Signature Trust. It is Boom Bells and My Pro in the aggro dual lane. The safe dual lane is going to be Jap as well um, as Lakel's. So this March Undying, he can get brought down, but if he uses his decays wisely uh, and maybe even gets to the early points in Soul Rip, he should be able to stay alive through a lot of this burst damage, although it is a lot. I mean, especially when Fade Bolt level 2 comes out. And now the Signature Trust is running these dual lanes. Undying might be able to really wreak some havoc. Yeah. This is, this is a, Undying will get, I think, a lot out of this lane. He just has to be careful not to get bursted down. And his positioning is going to be very important. We'll have to wait and see. But Tri-Lane versus Dual Lane, and my pro actually just can't walk up. Already has the new Immortal 2, the Inscribed Tormented Staff. Uh, this gives you the new Split Earth animation that I've seen numerous times that's, already. That's, that's why they, that's, they had to update the patch, and they had to make sure they got their Immortals, man. That's what took them so long. The immortals are pretty cool. You I can't play without your Immortals. I know you were not a fan of the Anti-Mage well, uh, I just color don't like color change. palette changes, yeah. And the red just kind of throws me off. But I do like their little Shrek staff, even though the attack animation is very, very new. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I actually like it a bit more than the regular attack animation. It feels more forceful, and it yeah. feels like, you know, this is what his attack animation should be. Splitter, it's going to go. It will miss. Uh, the radius at level 1 is pretty awful, and so KP is just going to be able to back away and go from there. This is an interesting build for him, too. He's got a circlet and four Ironwood branches. I guess if you're going aggressive, you want to make sure you got a lot of stats. Uh, you only the Shrek need, is a very squishy pony. You only need two uh, Ironwood branches as well as the circlet for the wand now, I believe. He'll just be selling the branches, yeah, I, seen, which he, is not, not bad. Just get the extra mana to work with, maybe some extra HP it's as well. It's interesting that he doesn't have like a clarity or two. Yeah. Uh, actually, that is kind of interesting, but he does have a big mana pool to work with. I'm sure they have some clarities mm -hmm. maybe on the Shadow Demon. They do. They have one clarity. Did go for boots first. No smoke coming out from MVP. They just want to get that top rune spot and secure it, and they will. Um, the Storm Spirit's having a great time. QO is at 12 last hits, and, and this is what we're talking about. I feel like if, if MVP are going to win, it's generally because QO is flaring and, and having a fantastic time. Yeah. He's usually their, uh, the marker, right? If he has a good game, they're going to have a good game. Exactly. And he'll just sit back mid. Then again, this is a DK, and I do want to point out that DK never really has a favorable matchup. Yep. He only tries to not lose, essentially. And a and, really uh, unfortunate ward up here top. Just just missing the D ward here. Barely outside the radius. Oh, my God. I've seen this so often in the past it couple hurts. weeks. That actually it sucks. But so it's a really much. smart ward from the rating team. And they should actually see, yeah, they do see MVP here just hiding the tree line as well. MVP looking to jump in, maybe. Seeing to tr trust, they know they're not going to get you know, caught out by this. My Pro and Boom Bells as well are just going to back up and make sure they don't get caught out. Static Link's going to go. My Pro is going to get fished up as well. They're going to link a little bit of damage. The cast will fly, but they won't dive this. Cast will bounce as well. It's kind of annoying, but. Luckiest yeah. bounces. If that Fissure would have hit, and they would have got those lucky bounces, that could have been worse. I think more than like bad sentry placement from MVP, it's just really good ward place, uh, ob placement from Signature Trust. Like, Knowing exactly where the normal wards are placed, like here, so you can get vision of the pool camp, or even a little bit farther down where you have vision of this, you know, upward ramp coming in. But instead, you put it up here and a little bit outside of the normal sentry ward spot. So, smart by them. It's definitely something we don't see too often. I think teams that expand on their ward placements, I, I just like the idea of experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, but Abba in the mid lane is getting kind of, I wouldn't say wrecked. He's still doing relatively okay. 12 to 20. QO is having a great time now. He's at 600 gold. He has his bottle, I believe, flying out. So his farm is already doing pretty well for himself. They this is a pretty storm-favored matchup. Anyway. It, it is. I mean, it definitely is. They, they don't have any stacks in the jungle. Uh, I, I'm, that's not surprising because the MVP supports have had, had to bend in lane. They're not really doing anything with this aggro tri lane coming out for Signature Trust, though. They aren't really getting anything done. They'll chase down Nuts. He's fine. Um, Boom Bells and My Pro are just kind of trying to get experience. They're not getting kills. And they're actually kind of in a really weird position. And KP is just farming top. And then bottom lane, March and Jap going toe to toe with Decay. They're going to rotate wrap and wrap around with MVP. Q will get a haste rune. I think they see this. And my pro is like, I need to get out immediately. Febby should Smart see route. them rotate this, through. But this brand new OBS ward placed out that movement, and my pro is going to be taking the smartest route, I think, unless QO is there. To, no, he got disrupted rune? for a second, but that haste rune is still going. He's almost level six as well. 120. My pro has his split earth ready to go. He's not going to use it. QO does not have the uh, electric vortex, but they do have Fisher. They won't use it though. They just waste a lot of time trying mm -hmm. to go for a kill, and it does not pay off. Yeah, it ends up. 
I mean, I don't think anyone gets anything out of that, but MVP wasted more resources there with the uh, hate stream. Not getting a kill. The fire goes on to QO. And, and a quick it, little DC from it begins. It begins. Don't say it begins. It's bad. There you go. I hope this is wood. Um, it's woodish. So, excellent. <laughs> I knocked on the desk in case you guys were wondering. So, MVP, they are off to a 1 0 start in terms of a kill. They are pretty even in terms of CS. The Lushrak is not getting anything in the off lane. No, he's not. March is getting a bit more. March should be level four. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I think I think Signature Trust got a bit bamboozled thinking about how these lanes were going to end up. I think they really thought this Earthshaker was going to be going off lane and uh, Earthshaker and uh, Undying was going to be playing the support. And I think they came to that conclusion based on who March was playing. Yep. And then that's that's one of the benefits of MVP being able to swap things around a bit. So. MVP, I think, is definitely, even after that failed attempt at a gank, I still still think they're coming out on top right now. Just because Lestrak is, re he really, really, really needs uh, farm. Otherwise, he just becomes... Uh, farm and experience, honestly. Yeah, farm and experience. Because he, he is one of the squishier heroes in the game, and without, you know, a quick little boost of items, he can be really easy to take down. We were ready to get back into the game. There was an item bug coming up from iPro, and that's the best news I've heard all day, honestly. <laughs> we're going to jump back in and get ready to go. Uh, mid lane, ABBA going up against QO. They're back at it right now. QO did rotate. ABBA did not have six. If he did have six, maybe he pushes the wave, puts a little bit of damage on the tier one tower mid. That's not the case. March is getting lots of experience in this offlane. Jop is trying his best to zone him out. And Mikhail's, of course, now sitting in phase boots. 30 last hits, 19 denies. Storm is right behind him with 29 and 5. It's just kind of patient play right now. We're not seeing any rotations, no death ball, obviously. Not yet, anyway. Telkinis is going to go bottom. Rocket Barrage is not going to do really that much. March will pop the Tombstone, gets a TP coming in as well. There's the Decay. Lakel's not taking that much damage, and so they're going to zone him out. Nuts TP's in for free. And just by throwing up two abilities, they force a rotation and they force out the usage of the Tombstone as well. So that's pretty big. They'll rotate another hero in, though. It is going to be uh, QO. He has his ball lightning. He's going to use it. Lakel gets so ripped up. Now they're going to use another ball as well. There's going to be the rocket barrage. The cast goes in from Nuts. Another usage of that ball lightning. Jap is going to lift, and he might be able to lift. No, Nuts gets that last right click. And suddenly, Lakel gets cleaned up by a great rotation early on here from QO with that TP. And that'll get him up almost to oh, seven as well. He's going to catch out the stack. Yeah, that's huge. When QO gets the stack. He gets his treads up. He has his bottle. We'll see if he gets his soul ring or maybe goes straight for that orchid. He's got a lot of room to work with. It's a good time to be QO. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, he's rocking it right now. That that move that movement did allow my pro to get a little bit more form, more form top. Whether or not that's going to be enough to keep him uh, get him back into the game, we will see. He's still only at six last hits. He's level four, but they they have a lot of time to work with and. As long as they can keep QO under wraps, maybe this game can stay even. But QO, if he balls out of control, literally, then all of a sudden this becomes uh, a very difficult game. Just because they do have some really good lockdown, but it's not really... The only thing they have that's instant cast is Elder Dragon Form, Dragon Tail, pretty much, and Lift coming out from the Rubik. Mm. Disruption's good, obviously, to set up a Split Earth, but... There's a lot of setup for the Split Earth, but... Yeah. Lakels is going to get Soul Ripped as well as the Cape Bottom. He stick charges up and... The Maledict going through March is running low on mana. He has another Decay and one. This is level two Maledict, too. I don't know. The, I don't think this is going to get to kill. The Maledict is yeah, actually yeah. just going to be off right now, but it does do a lot of damage to the Kells. That's going for a very aggressive build. One point in the Coconut, one point in the heal, two points in Maledict. We'll see if he gets a third point in it at level five. I wouldn't be surprised. Maledict is... I think a lot of people have been building it that way. The one point Buddha Restoration, too good to pass up. They are going to go in the Tier 1 tower. TP's going to come in from QO, but they need more help as well. He's going to walk in. Abba has his Dragon Tail at the ready. It is level 1, but still, that stun duration at its first level is ridiculous. The Tier 1 tower getting assaulted. They're actually going to make the last hit. Coming out for the Lashrak, and that is the beginning of a death ball, potentially. They could do that same exact thing to pretty much every other tower on the map. But they have to be careful as how they play it. So, Tier 1 tower is dead. So, yeah, so far in this patch, it is still most common to pick up the third point and the... Uh, Coconut, the stun at level at level five, but it's becoming more and more common. We're seeing a lot of instances. I would say maybe 10, 15 percent of Witch Doctor games so far, we do see the third point in Maledict to level five. So, Kyo and Abba going toe to toe. Ball lightning onto the rune. Kyo picks up his bounty. Will he go for this kill? Looks like he will. He has his soul ring as well. 
Nia's only the level one pull. He's gonna keep going. Abba's very tanky though. He's nine armor coming through, and Kyo's gonna use all of his mana pool to try to get this kill. And the breathe fire comes out just to reduce the damage. They had a Rubik nearby. Kyo decides smartly not to chase any further, but he expends all of his mana yeah. and bottle charges in the process. That's a Kyo play. Yeah, that I mean, there's statistically no way he gets that kill, and and or just it just doesn't seem like it. I don't know why it goes for that. There's a call on the march. He does have a soul rip. No tombstone. He already dropped it. Rip's gonna go. They're looking for a telekinesis. They'll find it. They'll bring him back as well. March has decay in one just to make himself a bit tankier and will. So hard to kill these two heroes. The Dragonite as well as the Undying. Yeah. March is playing a very good game so far on Undying. Forcing a lot of pressure. He's got three assists already. And Lakels is not having... He's having a pretty good farming game still. 63 and 25. But it could be a lot worse for MVP. I mean... The thing is, Signature Trust have this DK who seems kind of underfarmed. 41 last hits, I guess it's not that bad. It, it's just really the, the Lashrak that I, I worry about. He has Arcanes actually pretty early on, but they are pretty inexpensive in yeah. comparison to the 1,000 gold. So Net worth wise, Lakels and uh, Abba are about the same, but QO is just leading everyone at the moment. So. Yeah, he has, and this is no surprise really. He got those couple of kills down bottom. Mm -hmm. He's been getting great CS. Stacks in the jungle, I think he took one of them. Uh, there's no other stacks that I can see. Febby's going to walk through. He's playing the Earthshaker. He's almost level 5. That's pretty good. He's got 400 gold and boots, so definitely not a, it's not a terrible support Earthshaker game, honestly, for Febby. And it's going to hopefully continue on that trend as they smoke bottom. See if they can pick anybody out here. Jap maybe making the wrong move, but no QO is going to go right on the Lakels. There's going to be the usage of the coconut. They get the kill. He does get the call down. Great defensive disruption. The breathe fire comes in. They will get the kill on the gyro. But what else can they get out of this? Jop getting low. QO survives. Here comes KP. The plasma field. Abba getting turned on. Nice breathe fire. Doesn't matter. Gets destroyed by those four heroes. Nuts going in with the cast and the Voodoo restoration. Just healing up so much. Fisher comes in from February from the north. They'll get four kills. Signature Trust have yet to get on the board 10 minutes in, and MVP are starting to, well, it's death ball again. MVP has been willing to move their heroes around the map. KP just TP bottom. QO's already went to three different lanes this early. March went top for a kill. Like, they're willing to leave their lanes to get kills, and it, show, and it shows right now the strength of doing that this patch. Yeah, and... Signature Trust, my pro just wasn't ready, I guess, to be there, honestly. No, he wasn't. He had to go back to the tower to fight. He's half health, half man. He couldn't really involve himself in the fight. So, I mean, where do you go from here? Because it feels like you're starting to lag behind. Like, the Gyrocopter's died twice in the past couple of minutes here. He's sitting on an Ogre Club, and if he goes for BKB first, it, it feels like maybe he... I, I mean, I don't know if that's going to be enough damage for you, and especially because the Shrek has nothing, the DK is going to have only his Elder Dragon form and breathe fire. Right. And it just feels like they're, they're underwhelming at this point on the side of Signature Trust. The problem is at this point, Signature Trust can't really fight, because they will lose. So they just have to hope that they can farm up effectively, stay safe, avoid the ganks, and try to we like kind of worm their way back into the mid-game. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes, honestly. Um, Abba? He's going to back away. All right. Tombstone. Boom TP out. Oh, he my is God. Not gonna get he out got there. obliterated. I guess Decay on a Shadow <laughs> Demon doesn't feel very good, yeah. apparently, plus a Fissure to the face. Signature like, Trust has been outnumbered in every single fight that's been taken so far. MVP is just, like I said before, just willing to move around. And Q is going to go for an early Bloodstone here. Top lane. Abba, no. He's going to get Fissured up. Will there be a follow-up? No, but Febby maybe went a little bit too deep. Rip, rip, rip. March. Echo Slam. He will go down, but March going to work. Soul Rip can get this kill, maybe. They're just going to right-click him down. Decay goes through. Last whip. Will get the kill for KP. March is low. They can't afford to give this up. They do. That's a big kill for Lakels going the way on the side of Signature Trust, but KP still going in. Ball Lightning coming through. Call down. Misses, actually, but now they're going to turn in. They're going to look for My Pro on the backside. Split Earth. Avoided by QO nicely. He gets the Mega Kill Streak, and he's still going. He's still rolling. Job in trouble. A couple more right clicks can't finish him off, but they're more than happy with that. As they do pick up two kills, they do let the Gyro get out alive with a kill in tow, but they're just losing too much at this point for Signature Trust for these trades to be worth it. That was better, though. It was, yeah. Lakel's willing to TP, help out the fight. That's kind of what kind of what carries have to do now. Yeah. If it gets to the point where you're going to lose two heroes, like that is so much of a momentum swing now 
the, if that's going to happen as a carry, you just almost have to TP to help out. Man, it feels like Signature Trust, we talked about how they play for Protect 1. It almost right. feels like they're not ready for this patch or this play style. And MVP are like, we have QO. He's farming really well. We got him two kills. Let's keep him snowballing. And they right. have been keeping him snowballing. Well, I think if you're going to do 4 Protect 1, it's kind of hard to do 4 Protect 1 when you run an aggressive try lane, right? Yeah. The idea was maybe to pin the supports of MVP so they couldn't rotate down to the gyrocopter, but... I think doing just, the dual lanes wasn't enough. Yeah, they didn't do the aggressive, right? They did yeah. the dual lanes. They, they so had, it wasn't enough to pin the support's top from rotating around and making plays other way. They, they had other the combo, places. and they just never really used it. Right. I mean, not that there was a really good position, because that tri lane that you talked about, you know, going into an Earthshaker is not easy to do. Fisher now into Abba, play. and does block him, but there's the Tombstone, actually frees him up. The Caledon's going to fly through. It'll hit on March, but he's pretty tanky. Kyo jumps all the way in. There's a lot of heroes, but that cast goes in. The Death Ward as well, the Plasma Field. There's so much damage. Abba is about to fall. The double to Came from Marge. This Flesh Golem is a big man. They're going to get four kills on the side of Signature Trust and maybe even go for this Tier 1 Tower as well. And it feels like Signature Trust are just... Oh, what do you do, man? What oh, do man, you really do? There's, there's honestly not much at this point. Uh, they have to be... They have to just out-execute team fights. Just take the right fights, maybe have MVP being a little cocky, diving towers, uh, get a couple of counter kills, and then work from there. But... At the moment, if they make many more mistakes, there's no coming back. And it feels like they've already made a great deal of mistakes just by where they've been playing, their positioning, coming to team fights, which you've mentioned a lot. Their lane decision wasn't the best, um, as we talked about at, at the beginning. So MVP Phoenix in a dominating position. This is, again, a team that is very experienced with Bebby and March and QO, but I did not expect them to bring this much of an A game here in this first series, oh, at least yes. at the start. It's actually ridiculous. KP has a full mech, treads, Aquila, and a point booster, and he's not even the most farmed hero in the game at 15 minutes. No, that is, not. that is, of course, the Storm Spirit. QO is. Does he have a complete? He has a full bloodstone. Yeah, he's got a completed bloodstone. At he has minutes. a full bloodstone at 15 minutes into the game. The good thing is, there's a silver lining here: is that Signature Trust win one fight, his bloodstone is down to six or whatever mm -hmm. charges. And suddenly, he's not snowballing as hard as he possibly could. The bad thing is, is that they're so far behind that taking this fight, um, even if they might have an advantage otherwise, and they still lose, all of a sudden, MVP QO has maybe 10, 11, 12 okay. some charges. I, I talked about how they need to just pick a good fight. This uh, Smoking as well is kind of the same idea, right? Just yep. taking advantage and getting a good fight. Yep. So Signature is going to try that. Unfortunately, they're not going to find anybody, but it's the right idea. Maybe they can five, down, five men down this tower. And they might be able to, but they'll be trading for a tier 2 bottom, perhaps. As Lakels is up here. His BKB is flying out right now. That's, that's good. And that's going to keep him safe from the Storm Spirit a little bit longer, as well as the Undying. And pretty much actually all the damage. The Static Link is going to be a bit rough. But, but at the end of the day, MVP is going to notice this, and they're just going to take a tier 2. Yeah, they're not going to try to TP back for this trade. And if you are a Sig Trust, I think you, you farm elsewhere or you keep going. And, and that... That's clearly the game plan, I think, for Jap. He's not coming to that bottom lane, at least not yet. They're going to send over my pro. I really don't think they can defend this. They, they, there are five all, heroes nearby. All of MVP is here. They're trying not to show that they're all here, but if they go into this, it's going to be a going to be a mistake. Yeah, they, there's three heroes showing right now. The other two sort of nearby. There's a Q is just farming up now. They have no vision here in the jungle at all. In fact, the vision is very limited. This, this vision by MVP is the opposite of limited as well. They've got this really aggressive high ground ward already up. Another one in the jungle. There's just not a whole lot of safe places for Sig Trust to be right now. Yeah, and, and actually, they, there's a lot of knowledge out for MVP right now. They know there's two or three heroes. But there's, they know there's one hero bottom at least. So they could have made a play maybe on the bottom, maybe on the mid if they really wanted to with all five heroes. They decided against it. They go for the safer play, which is to farm up top mm -hmm. and move on from there. Lakels will have a triple ancient stack here, which will be enough to... Well, he's not actually... He, BKB first, not a bad item. I think that's pro, when you're this far behind, you kind of need it. Yeah, but the problem is, are you going to be able to farm up that ancient stack? And the answer is, it's going to take a while. God, that's, or probably it's, not. It's kind of the damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, right? BKB, when you're behind, usually seems like the safe play, but it's oftentimes the, the play that means that you don't quite have enough damage output to win the fights that you need to to win. Yes, I agree with you. They're really relying on Rocket Barrage. Really good positioning. And what level is the Shrek? That is the real question. Level 8, he needs a lot more. He is at max lightning storm. That's great. Only level 1 Pulse Nova and level 2 Splitter is not fantastic. I mean, it, it, if you have max 
uh, of all of these abilities, except maybe like level your level 14 or whatever, right. then that's fine. Yeah. Like that's perfect. And MVP, they'll be able to take advantage of all this vision they have. They'll take a really fast rush, and they are going to smoke right out of it. They want to get something done now. And Febby, if he wins this fight, he gets a blank dagger, and it looks like they're in a prime position, prime real estate to do oh, so. Oh, poor Lakel, he's so he's low. So low. This tag down. Fisher's going to come in. Ball lightning. Kyo actually snipes the kill and gets the last ancient for good measure. Mars will continue onward. Ball lightning further. Look how far he's going. Gets immediately lifted. There's a dragon tail. Demonic purge. Glimmer cape. Ball lightning further. BB in trouble now. Tombstones dropped up as well. And man, Ava's getting run right at. There's the death ward. And this might honestly just be it. There, there's nothing they could do. They've already lost the gyrocopter. They're split pushing. They're even going to try for my pro to cut the creep wave. And at this point, it just is it's awful. A ball lightning seal at least. He has like no mana to use that. I guess it is 60 got activation. Him away. It got him away. It's 60 activation and then um, it's based, seven per, per I unit. I mean, it's it's one of the more it's it's based off of percentage yeah. of your mana. So yeah, yeah. I guess that's fine. Um, Radiance top tower is under attack. But that's not really going to do anything. <laughs> that does nothing, dude. Let's be honest, dude. It's three to seventeen and eighteen minutes. The game's not over. I'm trying to pull out some positive. I, I mean, there there is a, a miracle team fight here somewhere for Sig Trust, but I can't see it. Off the top of my head, yeah, it really comes down really like a five-man five split earth or something right, yeah, ridiculous. Exactly. I mean, the, the yeah, the split earth and the call down is really the, the are a big stolen spell like a tombstone steal or an echo slam steal or a death ward steal. Good job, you just stole ball lightning. Don't lose it. All right, good, you got out. Fisher on a two though. Decay. They already whipped one down. The tombstone's up. Breathe fire. Solar call down's gonna go in. The Kells is like, I'm going in, boys, but I'm alone. Glimmer cave on the march. Actually does a, does a ton of damage. Brings down that witch doctor spell was stolen. Job now going to work. Fisher goes in. Gets another kill onto the earth shaker. They're going in too hard, it looks like. MVP need to back off, and they almost get one. They will get that kill. QO does have the ages. He'll be able to get out if necessary. Static Link only linking a little bit of damage. That was a pretty good fight for Sig Trust, all things considered. And QO's going to keep going in. He wants Abba, but great Fisher steal from Jop. Telekinesis, but he dies. He dies to, I think, the right click of QO. He gets a triple kill. He's beyond God. Like, he's got 15 goddamn Bloodstone charges, and he zips away. They have to buy back on Jop. They're getting run over in the base. And even gets a BKB just for good measure at 20 minutes in. QO is on fire. Now, this is this is very typical Storm Swift play. Very typical QO play. Like he goes in so they go in so hard. I'm like, oh, they're gonna back off. They dove the tier three tower. They lost the ages. It was a I'm pretty sloppy fight from MVP, but they're just so far ahead. It yeah, doesn't they, matter. It doesn't matter to them exactly. And. I mean, um, I mean, we're at 15k net worth. That was without Blink minutes. Echo Slam too, by the way. Blink is flying out for Febby. Like I mentioned, it's 15k net worth as well as 10,000 experience. So Oof. it's uh, against a Storm Spirit that's real bad. Because how are you going to kill him now? He's a BKB. He's almost impossible and to deal with. It, all their, all of their setup for him is like telekinesis instant, disruptions instant. But other than that, the split earth is really what they need to. Like hold him in place, and that's really hard. The Abba demonic can... purge is the only thing that goes through BKB as well. Right, and that doesn't matter when you have a storm spirit. You ball lightning, yeah. and you're just like, I guess they're all dead now. Yeah, not looking good for signature trust. Uh, like I, I feel like I've harped on this a lot this qualifiers, but at this point, it's a best of two series. So what you really are doing is playing for the next game. Signature Maybe trust really need to be thinking about feeling out maepe some things about MVP, getting some uh, maybe some intelligence they can work on for the next game. And MVP, they want to win in the most demoralizing way possible. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty true. Crushing the, mor the morale of the enemy team is very important for any Dota team, I think, especially in the qualifiers. So they will, It's not, again, it's not over yet. All they really need, there could be like another push like that where they lose a couple of heroes, especially if they lose the Storm Spirit. Uh, they give away that Beyond Godlike Spree to Lakels and the Gyrocopter, and all of a sudden he gets like 2,000 gold or something ridiculous. Uh, it'd probably be more like 1,500, but still. That one big kill for the Kells might be what they need. Or even the DK as well. That one big kill for the DK. That one big kill for the Lashrac. Yep. He's going Hags, by the way. This is very uncommon for core Lashracs in this patch so far that we've seen. Um, I think it's an okay item, but you kind of need mana regeneration. And Octarine Core is not bad either. Yeah. BKB is not bad. Blink Dagger is not bad. There's a lot of good items. And I, don't I, know mean, I think BKB is... is Game losing. I don't really know if I like that phrase, but it's kind of true. Um, so is Ags on Lashrek right now. Also, I, I don't know. At this point, I feel like you maybe need something like a Glimmer Cape. I don't know, just to stay alive. Four staff. Four staff. Yules. I like I was just using Pulse Nova to keep the regen ring going. <laughs> the regen ring going. He's a Storm Spirit player at heart, perhaps. 
Rogue respawns in three and a half minutes. MVP will not wait that long to push high ground. They're going right for it. 22 minutes in, and there's no real reason for them to stop going for this. No. And this is the, this is the right play just to do a little bit of push. Leave DK behind. Let him try to push this tower. That's, I mean, this is really the only play. And they're going to get ready to go. KP nuts. He has no Aghanim Scepter, not yet. That's, that would be pretty early. Tombstone gets placed down. KP has Aghanim Scepter. Jump in from QO. Blows up the Rubik. Lakels pops the BKB. Only to get Static Link. Fisher blocked and it death warded. Corralled into death himself. Has no buyback. Boom Bells is going to get jumped on. BKB still going to work for QO. Gets a double kill. My pro will probably look for a split earth here, but it's just too late. They call GG. And that was about as dominating of a performance as you could possibly have for a team. Right. That is one of the outcomes of this patch. It seems to be either you just get five-man deathfall down early due to, the snow, to a snowball mid or bad decisions in the early game, and you lose it 25 minutes, or it goes 55 minutes. It seems kind of one or the other. It's very strange. It's a very weird patch. We have yet to really know the full extent of how this is actually going to work out. And it might be, right. we, we talked about this again earlier, it's, it's just, it feels like maybe one team got out drafted, the other team maybe drafted solid heroes, they snowballed, and if you have a big enough lead early on, you can close out the game.